this is impressive. This is quite a crowd. This is what uh, local support looks like, uh, and I think you should all give yourselves a big, big round of applause. Yeah. I'm with Rethink Energy New Jersey, and we work to empower communities just like yours uh, to help move New Jersey away from dirty fossil fuels like natural gas towards clean renewables like wind and solar. But we're all here today because of this. This is the draft environmental impact study. Many of you have seen it. Many of you have uh, read it. And many of you know where you'd like to file it. So we're going to go to school. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, if I didn't complete homework, my teacher would take out a big red pen and she would mark a great big I on, uh, on my homework. And sadly, that happened more than I'd like to admit. But we're going to do that with the DIS. Some of the things that are missing, and I brought a red pen, uh, some of the things that are missing uh, include uh, air impacts, water, and safety. And really, you can't get more basic than that, right? Water, air, and safety. Without those things, we can't live. And this project poses potential serious risks for this community, for the Bay as well. So some of the water, water data that's missing is there's no detailed monitoring plans for the Raritan Bay. So that's a big I. There's no modeling of contaminations from pollutants that they could dig up in the Bay. That's another I. There's no thorough evaluation of impact to marine life from shellfish to the Atlantic sturgeon to whales, which are making a comeback. You can see the picture down there of whales. That was just a couple years ago. And uh, there's no, there's tons of missing data on onshore impacts and a very poor stormwater plan, which is inaccurate as well. In terms of air and health, the DEIS says that the health impact assessment is not needed. And the speaker after me is going to speak more to that. But I can tell you that they do not have the information needed to even begin to make that kind of an evaluation. There's no peak exposure of emissions that are given, and that's how people really respond to emissions, not over an average of a year, but when, when the emissions are actually emitted, when they're high, that's how people experience the negative impacts of emissions. There's no multiple exposures of peak emissions given. That's another I. And it underestimates the pollutions of hazardous materials like formaldehyde and acrolein. And they actually say in the DEIS that they are underneath New Jersey's standards. But they only measured one of the turbines, not the other one. So there's incorrect information as well. So we also need to know that only 10 miles from here is another newly expanded compressor station, number 205. And there's no look at the cumulative emissions of that compressor station and this compressor station and how that would impact these our communities. In terms of safety, well, it is nice to say that the DIS offers no analysis of how increased volume and rate of gas pushed through this project would impact the aging Williams Transco pipeline system. I think uh, Mayor Kramer said it best a few months back when he said, if you can't prove to us it's safe, it's not. Yeah. Right. So, this is such an issue in New Jersey that there's been recent legisla legislation introduced um, uh, asking that all interstate pipelines coming into the state of New Jersey meet with New Jersey's higher safety regulations. And that is not the case. Interstate pipelines are not built to New Jersey's higher pipeline standards regulations. They're just not. And is that acceptable? No. No, it is not. But that's what the reality that we're stuck with right now. So we want to say, because of all this incomplete and uh, inaccurate information, we're going to take this DEIS. And we're going to put a great big I for incomplete. And we are happy to lend our pen, our red pen, to New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection so they can follow New York's Department of Environmental Conservation's lead and deny the water permits that are pending for them. And you know, there's a lot of noise going on around the world. And I just wonder, does anybody feel like singing? Anybody feel like singing? Are we doing just one verse? Can we do one verse? Oh, Linda says we're in a rush. Should I sing or not sing? We sing, sing. All right. We shall, we shall, we shall not be moved. We shall, we shall, we shall not be moved just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everyone.
everyone. Hi. Closer? Okay. Princeton students, like students everywhere, are held to high standards of integrity in our research. We would not dream of handing in a paper without exciting exclusively peer-reviewed, reputable sources or rely on incomplete data sets to prove experimental hypotheses. Yet even a cursory look at the draft environmental impact statement a report prepared by experts whose results have real consequences for the health and safety of local residents would show that this research is incomplete. The DEIS relies on estimates and modeling of emissions provided by Williams Transco itself instead of accurate, independent measurements from comparable facilities. The DEIS only considers the emissions within a quarter mile of proposed facilities, despite multiple peer-reviewed studies that show emissions plumes impact a radius of up to five miles from the source. The DEIS use outdated standards to avoid conducting a health impact assessment, even though the standards ignore many toxic chemicals known to be released by compressor stations. The research in the DEIS is far from complete. Yet FERC is asking us to live with the consequences of the project anyway. Young people like me will have to live with the consequences of the decisions being made today for decades to come. We'll have to live with the cost of continuous exposure to toxic air for the greater part of our lives. We'll have to live with the threat of contamination in our water supply and wildlife habitats. We'll have to live with the consequences for our climate and economy of sinking money and infrastructure for the natural gas industry at the expense of renewables that are growing more affordable and viable each day. We recognize that our affluent community has an enormous amount of privilege. We are paying attention to this project because it affects our own families. While we may not have similarly spoken up against facilities that already contaminate the air of Newark, Camden, and Trenton every day. So this movement cannot solely be about protecting our own air and water. We must fight the expansion of natural gas infrastructure in every community and reach for the overarching goal of promoting a renewable energy future. Mobilizing students, Princeton students, for any cause is no easy task. But Princeton students submitted over 100 comments to FERC about NESE, not only because it directly impacts our own health and safety, but because this project represents a step backward from the sustainable future that we all need. I urge you, I urge you all, please join us. Raise your voice in opposition against this project that will leave lasting consequences for our health and climate in the decades to come. Thank you. Hey, so, hey, so, uh, what's your name? My name is Ciro Scalera. I'm Director of Government Relations for the Laborers International Union of North America. Okay, what, what's your relation to the uh, William Stransko uh, Nessie project? Well, our union builds all forms of energy, including uh, compressor stations and pipelines, solar, wind, all forms. So all forms, so this is just one part of, like, one project? Part of, yeah, this is one project among the varied energy work that we do. Do you know how many people in Franklin Township may be working with your union during this project? Oh, we probably have um, at least a dozen members that live in the town. Um, if you look at the county, it, the, the number is much higher. So we do, we have members in every county that, in, throughout the state. And, um, you know, and then we, we have people who will come in and from other parts of the state and help build it too. Uh, all New Jersey. Do you know approximately how much money, uh, like the tax rateables, that uh, the people in this township probably will gain from this project? I, I don't have that number, but we know that it's going to have a significant economic development impact, positive, uh, create um, investment of over $240 million, uh, direct and indirect. It's going to create 200, uh, 2,400 jobs, and this is all good for the economy. The other point, our main point here is that our state's infrastructure is really old. If we want pipelines to be safe, if we want infrastructure to be safe, we need to build new, more modern, um, safer uh, infrastructure for supply and for safety. And so, back to that number, the $240 million number, do you know like what type of things, like what kind of line items are on that number? 
well, that, that certainly would include um, all the equipment and the supplies and the, you know, the things that are going to be used and purchased um, to, to build uh, the compressor station. It includes the wages, it includes the indirect impact of, um, you know, the, the, the people working in the area, supporting the local businesses. Uh, so it's, a, it's an aggregate amount. And we're, we're diving deeper into the number for the employees, like about how, like what kind of jobs would that um, constitute? Well, um, th there'll be a lot of construction jobs um, to, to, to build this section of what uh, the NESC project entails. Um, so most of those are construction jobs, and then there'll obviously there will be some permanent jobs related to servicing and operating the, uh, the station. And what would you say to like someone that has concerns about this project coming to the town? I tell them um, it's located in an open area. The guidelines from EPA and the state for noise, for emissions, are going to be complied with. And I would also tell them better to have new, more modern infrastructure than old. Because the newer, more modern uh, Compressor stations and pipelines are safer and will last a long, long time. Thank you. Okay, now, uh, what's your name? My name is Chris Hartman. And uh, what, what uh, company are you with? I'm a vice president of the New Jersey Alliance for Action. Okay, what's your relation to this um, current project that's coming to Franklin Township? Uh, the New Jersey Alliance for Action is an association of business, government, labor, and private citizens all coming together with the belief that investment in infrastructure is good for our economy, good for New Jersey's way of life, and good for our environment. So what do you think are some of the benefits of this project coming to uh, Franklin Township? Well, we believe the project is a good one because, A, New Jersey's infrastructure is very old. The infrastructure is falling apart all across the state. The project itself means better resiliency and redundancy in the system, especially after Hurricane Sandy. In addition to that, it means construction jobs. It's going to be tax revenue into the area. And not only that, there's also going to be jobs for the conversion for the compressor stations. It's going to be secondary economic benefits down the line as well. In we believe that it's more environmentally friendly. You take a look at coal, you take a look at all the other things that are going on out there that are dirty, you're looking at a better burning fuel. We need to have a very diverse energy mix in New Jersey. Nuclear, natural gas. The Alliance for Action also supports green energy. We've supported wind projects, we've supported solar projects. We believe you need to have a very diverse energy portfolio. This needs to be a part of it. So, um, getting back to jobs, I, I kind of was trying to get more clear information. Maybe you would have it. Mm -hmm. Like, what kind of job impact will this compression station have for this particular community? Based on the last report that I saw, it was over 3,500 jobs total, 2,400 jobs in New Jersey. You're looking at about 800 jobs or so for the conversion. And then there's no telling what that can mean for secondary jobs and what that means positively down, economically down the line. And what would you say to people that have concerns about the project coming to the town? Because the uh, main issue that some people here have is that they feel like, oh, we're not going to get any of the benefits of this project coming here, but you can kind of speak to that. Well, we always look at things on a statewide level. Uh, infrastructure is a shared burden across the state. Where I live, I have a lot of infrastructure going through my backyard that probably doesn't help me. But there's a guy in Middlesex County that has infrastructure going through his backyard that I'm sure it helps me. You're talking about the grid. You're talking about heat in the winter, especially when you're looking at the Northeast. It's a serious problem. It's a serious supply problem when everything gets cold. It's a crimp, and that's what happens. So infrastructure is a shared thing. So something might not necessarily help your particular house, but it will help you if you can heat your home. It's going to help you if you can keep the lights on during a storm. It helps you when you want your cell phone charged. It helps you when you want that flat screen TV on, things like that. So yeah, it's infrastructure is a shared burden on all of us. Thank you. You got it. Uh, people got to submit their uh, comments to, to FERC in writing as well uh, verbally. And uh, on the uh, 14th is the deadline. If you are an intervener, you can still submit comments on the draft em environmental impact statement as an intervener. So please do so. The more uh, they hear from us, the better it is. The numbers do count. Uh,